Great, and we want to welcome you watching on YouTube tonight, so thanks for joining us. And uh, tonight we're going to continue to feed on the Father's love. And I just felt the Lord just keep impressing me that we just need to keep feeding on His love until we get it. You know, it's not like we do a, a series on love and then we move on and do a series on something else and forget about the love. You know, I believe the Father wants us to feed on His love always. I think it's something He wants us to do every day. Uh, throughout the day, it's just continually feed on who He is because God is love. And uh, I want to talk about the favor of God tonight in relation to His love. And uh, the Lord did me the question and answer thing today. He asked me a question. He said, what is grace? And then he gave me this for an answer. He said, it's the demonstration of the Father's love. Yes. I thought that was pretty good. What is grace? It's the demonstration of the Father's love. So whenever the Father does something, uh, for example, what he did in sending Jesus, that was his grace. That was his love being demonstrated in grace. So what is grace? It is the demonstration of the Father's love. Love is demonstrated as undeserved, unmerited, unearned favor. Okay, The unconditional love of God comes to us as grace and favor. And how do we get more grace? How do we get more favor? Just simply by receiving. Just by receiving it. I was listening to um, Joshua Mills. You know, God's so good. Joshua came to uh, Horizon Church Recently, and we sort of missed out on it. We didn't actually realize it was over the whole weekend. I thought it was just Friday night. And so we missed out. But a friend, an old friend, rang up and he said, um, he said, I've got some DVDs I'd like you to copy for me. He said, they're of Joshua Mills. He said, I, I hired a guy to run a camera for me. And so I want to do some copies. So we got to, we got to see all the Joshua Mills DVDs. <laughs> so God's, you never miss out, do you, with God? He's so good. But one of the things Joshua said, he talked about being a generous receiver. You know, we've heard a lot about being a generous giver. But Joshua said, learn to be a generous receiver. Now, some people find it hard to receive. That they find it, you know, it easy to give. But if somebody wants to give something to them, it's like, oh, no, 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 I don't need anything. You know, sometimes we can just be a little reserved or maybe even a little proud. Well, I'm, I'm okay, I'm self-sufficient. But no, he said we need to be like a, just a generous receiver. Why? Because Daddy God wants to give us so much more. Okay? You know, it gives him pleasure when he's able to give into our lives. Just like you as a parent, the more you can bless and give your children, it does something to your own heart, you see. And Daddy God's the same way. So whenever we sort of, in pride, we sort of resist and say, well, Lord, I, I don't need that. You know, give it to the next person. I don't want you to run out. <laughs> It's like, he, that gives him no pleasure. He's like, what? You know, you're my son. I, wanna, I just want to bless you. I want to demonstrate my love to you more and more. So love is demonstrated as undeserved, unmerited, and unearned favor. Romans 8, uh, 31 and 32. Romans 8, 31, 32. What then shall we say to all this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can be our foe if God is on our side? Yeah. And verse 32, He who did not withhold or spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also with him freely and graciously give us all other things? Well, I like that. You know, giving us his son was a big enough deal as it is. But God said, that's just the beginning. That's just the down payment. He said, along with my son, I've, I've proved by demonstrating my love to you and giving you my son, that there's nothing else that I'll withhold from you. You see that? And he proved it. He demonstrated that love to us. It's the love of God that gives birth to the supernatural. The more we enter into an atmosphere of his love and glory, the more we're going to see the miracles and things break out. You know, think about God breaking into the earth. His, God so loved the world that he sent his only son how did he send his son? It was supernatural, wasn't it? The Virgin Mary. Okay, it wasn't by natural means. It was by supernatural. Okay? So it's the love of God that gives birth to the supernatural. Supernatural love will always move with supernatural power. And I think, once again, Joshua, basically Joshua Mills said something about it's the love of God that gives birth to the miracles of God. Somebody once asked me a very sincere question years ago, how do you activate miracles? 
And I thought about a few scriptures, you know, about the gift of the working of miracles and the glory atmosphere. But I, I really think what Joshua said, it's, it's the love of God that gives birth to miracles. I think that hits it on the head, doesn't it? It's the love of God. And I'm not talking about us trying to find some love for him. I'm talking about his love for us. Why? Because the Bible says we love him because he first loved us. All right? Think about um, the children of Israel in the desert. What did God do for them in the desert? What sort of things? How did God demonstrate his love to them in the desert? Anybody? What kind of things did he do for them? He fed them. That's right. Supernaturally. Where did the food come from, Sam? came from heaven. That's right. Manna from heaven. So it was super. It was the love of God. Supernatural love. Supernatural power. Manna from heaven. What else did he do? I think you said the water. Where did the water come from? From a tap? From the ground? From a rock. Supernatural, wasn't it? The rock was a type of Jesus. All right. Moses struck the rock. That was a type of Jesus being struck on the cross. And then the water of life being the result for that, you see. So, so God demonstrated his supernatural love by his supernatural power, even in the wilderness. Now, Psalm 102, uh, verse 12 and 13 says, But you, O Lord, shall endure forever, and the remembrance of your name to all generations. You will arise and have mercy on Zion. And Zion basically is a, a, a name for the church in all her glory. For the time to favor her Yes, the set time has come to favor the church. Now, when did that time begin? Anybody like to guess? When did, when did the favor of God come to the church? When did it start? Anybody just want to have a guess? When did, when did, that, favor, when did that set time of favor arrive on planet Earth? When Jesus came. Exactly right. Remember, he said, I am your jubilee. I am your year of jubilee. I am your debt cancellation. You know, I am stolen goods returned. Okay. And so the set time of favor began when Jesus came and, and he demonstrated that favor in his ministry. But that favor has never stopped. That favor is still happening today. And, uh, you know, I used to wonder, I used to look around at Christians and it was easy to see in some cases that certain ones would have favor on their life. You know, you've seen people like that. It's just like, God, they've, they've just got favor on their life, you know. And uh, Janita is one like that. You know, her name actually comes from Jane, which means God has favored. And so, um, and she just gets favor everywhere she goes, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, even today. And she's actually just had a massive one, which I'm not allowed to tell her about yet. <laughs> massive, a massive favor, the biggest yet. I'm not allowed to tell her yet. <laughs> and it's just, but I, you know, I've, I've noticed people in my Christian life and they just got the favor of God on them. And it's like, I guess you sort of ask yourself, why? Why does one have more favor than another? Does, does God seem to love them more or are they more pleasing to God? Is it something they've done to deserve it? But, you know, I've come to the conclusion that it's, it's because they believe that they're loved. It's because they believe that they're loved. And when I think about those people even now, um, that's true. They, they know that they're loved by God. They just know that God loves them. You know, just like the Apostle John, we talked about him. He said, I'm the disciple that Jesus loves. He wasn't being arrogant or puffed up. He just knew that he was loved. And so the set time to favor the church is here now. Favor is here now. And, and as you actually believe that God loves you, guess what? Favor just happens. You don't have to try and get it. It just happens to you. Why? Because you believe you're loved and you believe that God's going to demonstrate that love. And that's called favor. Because he said, how will he not also freely give us all things? In other words, there's some more things that he wants to give us. Physical things, material things in this life. Okay, we're going to just study a little bit through some uh, scriptures in the Psalms and the Proverbs on favor. And so I encourage you to take a note of these just so you can feed on them or listen to the YouTube. So Psalm 5 verse 12 says, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him as with a shield. You will surround him as with a shield with favor. In other words, this idea of God's love and God's favor 
is there's an idea of protection there. You know, once again, you think of people that are favoured, it's like nothing ever seems to go wrong in their life. <laughs> you ever notice that? It's like the, the enemy tries to touch them, but they just get more blessed. Why? Because that love is just like a, it's just like a shield around about them, that favour of God. Okay, um, so for you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favour. You will surround him with a shield. Um, now, the New Living Translation actually proves my original answer. It is a demonstration of the Father's love. It says this, For you bless the godly, O Lord. You surround them with your shield of love. So the New Living Translation picks up on the fact that Grace is a demonstration of the Father's love. So that was a confirmation of what the Lord gave me. For you bless the godly, O Lord, you surround them with your shield of love. Now here's the interesting thing about this word shield. It's very interesting. A lot of times the Bible talks about a shield. It just literally gives the idea of a, of a Roman shield or sometimes a buckler, which is like a small round combat shield. But this shield has a totally different meaning. This, uh, this particular word shield has to do with uh, something that is prickly, something that is sharp, and it comes from a root word that actually means a cactus hedge. <laughs> a cactus hedge. So you, O Lord, will surround me with a hedge of cactus. <laughs> so what's, what's the Lord getting at there? He's basically saying there is such a favor can, that can come on your life that the enemy can't touch you. And if he does try and touch you, he's going to get ripped to shreds. <laughs> and that's, that's just like I said before, you see that on people's lives. They've just got so much favor. It's just like the enemy might as well not be around anymore. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Remember when um, Saul of Tarsus was confronted by Jesus you remember what Jesus said to Saul? He said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. It's hard for you to kick against the goads. He was actually talking about the daggers that were actually attached to the wheels of the chariot. That's what he actually meant there. But I thought about this shield, this, this hedge of cactus there. You know, Paul, Saul was trying to persecute the church. And, and Jesus said, it, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. It's hard for you to persecute the church. Why? Because the church is surrounded by the favor of God. The love of God is protecting the church. You see that? And so we have this idea of favor being um, not only protective in a sense, but you would say it would also be an, what's the word, an offensive type of weapon as well. Because wherever you go, you know, people are going to get out of your way, aren't they? <laughs> if you're like a hedge of cactus, man, people are going to, they're going to part like the Red Sea and let you through. And so what an awesome picture for us to have of the favor of God. So here's some, some thoughts along with that. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. All right. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That love, that favor. And so on. Okay, here's another, another couple. Psalm 30, verse 5. For his anger is but for a moment, talking about the Lord, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night. How many remember that night? <laughs> Weeping may endure for a night, but what happens in the morning? Joy comes in the morning. Now, his anger is but for a moment. Can anybody specifically tell me what that means? When, when was that moment where God's anger was demonstrated? On the cross, exactly. God poured his anger against all sin and unrighteousness. He directed it to Jesus on the cross because Jesus became sin with our sin. So for a moment, all of God's wrath and anger was poured out on his son. But then it says, but favor is for a lifetime. And so there's no more anger directed to anybody, not even the person that doesn't know God. Okay. Uh, at the judgment, if they still don't know God, well, that's a different story. Okay, there will be a judgment for the person who doesn't know God. But for the believer, all God's anger was poured out on Jesus and there is no more anger for us. There's only favor. <laughs> There's only God's goodness. There's only God's pleasure and God's acceptance towards us. So his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. You could wake up tomorrow morning and say, 
another day of God's favour. I'm God's favourite. God loves me. His favour surrounds me like a shield. What are you doing? You're putting up that cactus hedge around you. You're, you're serving notice on the enemy. Enemy, you better not stand in my way today. <laughs> you know, he was trying to get me down the other day because I'd missed that opportunity by a couple of days and I had to pay an extra $60. But you know what? I just reminded myself that God loves me. And it wasn't just but a couple of hours later, a $100 check turns up at the door. Amazing, isn't it? That's the favour of God, isn't it? That's the favour of God. Okay, here's another one. Psalm 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord gives grace and glory, or we could say favour and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Okay? Awesome, isn't it? So he's a sun and a shield. What about walking uprightly? Well, what does that mean? That means to walk in your God-given righteousness. That means to walk with a sense of, I'm a child of God. God has made me righteous through his blood. I believe in Jesus and I've been made righteous. That's what it means to walk uprightly, to walk in your sonship. It's not talking about you know, your own good works. It's talking about God's righteousness on your life, walking in that. He will give grace and glory. Um, in the Amplified Bible, same verse, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows present grace and favor and future glory, honor, splendor, and heavenly bliss. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. I like that, heavenly bliss. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's one of the things we've learned in this recent season, is this is not all about you know, getting out of this rotten earth, trying to get to heaven for some heavenly bliss. This is about heaven coming to earth. Amen. This is about God's kingdom coming from heaven and colonizing the earth. Okay, Psalm 91, verse 4. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Okay, so his truth is like a shield around us. What truth would that be? The truth that he loves me? The truth that he is like a mother hen, and I dwell under the shadow of his wings? That's a picture of love, isn't it? It's a picture of paternal love parental love and so the truth about his love is a shield round about me in Psalm 91 the truth about how much he loves you praise God who's been practicing that just during the week saying father you love me you've been you've been doing that just do it as, as often as you can and uh, and just keep feeding on how much he loves you how many have found that the enemies try to take you to task on that yeah he'll try and tell you well you spent too much time on on this love stuff, you know, you need to have some balance here and get on some other stuff here. You're getting out of balance. All you're doing is focusing on God's love. And you can see that he's terrified. He's terrified about you knowing that you're loved. He hates it. Okay, but the Bible tells us that there is a testing of our faith. The parable of the sower says the enemy comes immediately to try and steal that seed. No, I've been aware of it, so I just double up. I just double up on saying, Father, you love me. You love me, you love me, and you love me some more. You just rub it in the devil's face. Say, I am loved. And especially when you did something wrong, that's when the enemy comes along and says, well, does God love you now? Yes, my father loves me even when I make a mistake. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> okay. So Psalm uh, 8, verse 35, in the Amplified Bible says, For whoever... Actually, I think this is probably supposed to be a proverb. Sorry, it'd be Proverbs 8.35. Whoever finds me, that's wisdom, finds life and draws forth and obtains favor from the Lord. Okay? So whoever finds wisdom finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. Now, the interesting thing is that Jesus came along and he said, I am your wisdom. He said, I am your righteousness. So whoever finds Jesus finds favor. How many found Jesus? <laughs> if you found Jesus, then you've got favor. You've obtained favor from the Lord. Uh, Proverbs eleven twenty seven. I'm just giving you a few scriptures tonight because I want you to go home and, and feed on, on these. So Proverbs eleven twenty seven. He who earnestly seeks good finds favor, but trouble will come to him 
who seeks evil. We could put it another way. He who expects good will find favour, but he who expects trouble will find evil. You know, there are two types of people in the world. There are those who expect good things to happen and those who expect bad things to happen. Okay, so really what this verse is saying is if you expect good to happen, you will find favour. Because <laughs> an expectation of good is really your faith in Father God. An expectation in trouble is actually faith in the enemy, when you think about it. If you're expecting bad things to happen all the time, then you've got more faith in the devil than you have in Father God. But if you expect good things, you're telling God that he's way more powerful and way more bigger than the enemy is. All right. We should only expect good things to happen because the Bible says only good and perfect gifts come from our Father. Okay. So um, Proverbs sixteen fifteen sixteen fifteen in the Amplified in the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as a cloud bringing the spring rain. Isn't that beautiful? In the light of the Father's face or in Jesus' face, there is favor. There is life and his favor is like a cloud bringing the spring rain. What's so good about the spring rain? What does the spring rain produce? It produces a harvest, doesn't it? In fact, in Israel right now, it's springtime. And of course, we're getting ready for Easter and then the day of Pentecost when the first fruits of the barley harvest comes forth. So they're looking for that latter rain, that spring rain to come. So this is what the favor is like. It's like, a, it's like a latter rain. And it comes from being in the presence of the king's face. When the, when the king looks at you, when Jesus looks at you, that's, you, that's his favor coming towards you. Remember the story of Esther? She didn't know what sort of reception she was going to get from the king. But the king looked up and stretched forth his scepter. And she found favor with the king. Well, you and I have found favor with Jesus. Amen. He's smiling upon us. He's not frowning at you. He's not, he's not grimacing because of something you didn't know. He's looking at you saying, my child, I love you. And I just want to bless you more and more and more. You see that? And so you look into Jesus' face and you see him smiling. And you find favor in his presence. He pours his spirit out and things grow in your life. Now, here's one that um, is kind of interesting. Proverbs 19.12, I borrowed this from Joseph Prince, actually. Um, well, this is from the Bible, of course, but what he said about it was interesting. The king's wrath is as terrifying as the roaring of a lion, but his favor is as refreshing as dew upon the grass. Okay, Interesting. The king's wrath is as terrifying as the roaring of a lion, but his favor is is as refreshing as the dew upon the grass. And, you know, um, sometimes in religion, you know, people will say, well, you know, when you do right, God is happy with you and he'll give you favor. But when you do wrong, you know, God's angry with you, you know, the king's wrath and don't expect anything good to happen in your life kind of thing. So you're kind of thinking, mm, man, I hope I've done good enough to, to earn favor from the Lord and I hope I haven't displeased him in any way. But what Joseph Prince shared about this is really, really powerful. He said, let the Bible interpret the Bible. And over in the New Testament, we find a scripture that says that the, the devil goes about as or like a roaring lion. He goes around like a roaring lion. And what does he do? Whenever we do something wrong, he comes along very quickly to condemn us. He comes along to tell us, man, you're just hopeless. You, you knew you were going to blow it again, didn't you? You know, you hopeless thing. You know, you've got this, you've got this problem and, and you just keep failing God. How could you call yourself a Christian? And it's like you've got this voice to deal with very often. It's, it's like the enemy. He's trying to roar like a lion. And basically what he's trying to do is he's trying to get you to believe that God's angry at you. He's trying to, trying to make you believe that that voice that comes to condemn is actually coming from your father. You see that? And uh, in and, and some cases, he has convinced Christians that, that that voice that comes along and tells them when they've done something wrong is from Father God. And it's like they feel condemned and, God, I'm so sorry, I'm going to try really hard to do better next time. Please forgive me, Father. And they get down and grovel on the ground and all this sort of stuff. You see that? And so, so the, the, the king's wrath 
is as terrifying as the roaring of a lion, but his favour is as refreshing as the dew upon the grass. Well, all we have to expect now is favour. We don't need to expect any wrath from the king anymore, do we? There is no more anger towards us. Only favour. Only favour. Okay, um, we'll just take one in the book of Acts here. Acts chapter 2, verse 46 and 47. Uh, book of Acts, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread, we did that tonight, from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. I love that. They just it said with simplicity, just like we did tonight with simplicity, we broke bread, we, we drank we drank the grape juice, we, the blood of Jesus, with simplicity, just remembering what Jesus has done, praising God and obtaining favor with everyone, the Bible says. Isn't that awesome? Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Praise God. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm expecting more favor. I'm just expecting good things to happen more and more and more. Why? Because I got a revelation of the Lord's love. Okay, what is grace? It is the demonstration of the Father's love. Love is demonstrated as undeserved, unmerited, unearned favor. Hallelujah! The more that you know that you're loved, guess what? More and more favor is going to be tracking you down and looking for your address. Amen. Favor is coming. To your address. Favor is coming to your family. Favor is coming to your situation, your your job situation. You know, Anthony just um, he's been standing his ground as a new believer for several weeks. Like he said, it hasn't been easy, but he's been standing his ground, and then he got a breakthrough on Friday. Somebody gave him a new job. It just he's got a much better boss now that actually wants to teach him things and help him, and uh, and then you know he got that blessing. So it's awesome, isn't it? And I just love it because Anthony came last night to the New Believers class. And uh, last night was just all about John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And I was talking to a guy at soccer. Sam is doing soccer now on Friday nights called First Kicks down the road at the park. And I ended up meeting a guy down there who turned out to be a Christian. And I said, oh, I said, we've got a church and we're having a, a new believers class tonight. That was last night. And he said, he said, you know, he said, I used to get involved in the new believers class. And he said, that was the favorite thing that I ever did. He said, because it would bring you back to just the simple truths of the Bible. You know, sometimes we get complicated. And he said, it would just bring you back to, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And I said, yeah, it's so refreshing, isn't it? Just to come back to that thing that God loves me. And he demonstrated it by sending Jesus to take my sin, my shame, my poverty, my rejection, my rubbish. You name it, he took it. Amen. And he just gave me everything good in return. What, what's that called? Unearned, unmerited, undeserved favor of God. Hallelujah. And I'm all for it. Praise God. How about you? How many want more? <laughs> and God wants to give you more. Amen. He just wants you to be a generous receiver. You've been generous givers. Now it's time to be a, a generous receiver of all that he has for you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, you've been great tonight. Would you like to stand up on your feet? And we'll just close off with a prayer and have some supper and get to know these, these new people here. So great to have you here. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands up to the Father tonight. Oh, Father, we want to thank you tonight. Just as Christine shared before, that it's just good to give you thanks. And we just say thank you, Daddy. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for sending your son. That you demonstrated your love. You gave, you gave it your best shot. You gave your very best. You gave your son, your perfect, spotless son. You gave his blood for us. And we thank you that we've been brought into your family and brought into your favor. And we're just so thankful that the testimonies that we've heard tonight and 
testimonies we can think about over the recent times of things that you've done, favour that you've given us. We are just so thankful, Father. Lord, even for the little things like the 10 cent coin today for Sam. <laughs> Lord, you just think of everything. Hallelujah. And I just thank you for each person here tonight that they are the object of your favour. That you've brought them here tonight to tell them how much they are loved and how much you want to bless them and favour their lives and do great things for them. Thank you, Daddy. We bless you, Father. We just, we just declare your favour this week. Father, in the places of study, in the workplace, in the clinic, in the homes, we just declare your favour. We just thank you that your face is shining upon us and shining upon our neighbourhoods, Father. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If anybody would like um, prayer for healing or anything tonight, just, just come forward. It's just a presence here, and I just feel a, like there's an anointing. So anybody want some healing, just, just come on forward, and we'll pray for you. You want some healing? Oh, you were hobbling around a bit there, weren't you? Have a seat. Oh, it's your neck, is it? Yeah, your neck. Okay. Mm. Do, you know, do you know why God's going to heal you? Because he loves you. <laughs> so it's done. It's a done deal. Father, we, we thank you for Siwa tonight. Father, we thank you that you just love her so much. That your favor is resting upon her. And Father, we just know right now that she's healed. And we release it, Father. We release that healing. A perfect work, Father. There it is. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Just move your neck around now. Move it around. How's that feeling? Feeling real good? 10 out of 10? Awesome. Amen. Yeah, give the Lord a hand, eh? Hey?